Hello everyone and happy International Vulture Awareness Day. My name is Elitsa Ivanova and I work for the Bulgarian Society for the Protection of Birds as a flyway communications officer. Today we are going to celebrate this intriguing, majestic, endangered and hugely important birds, the vultures, putting special attention on the smallest of Europe's four vulture species, the Egyptian vulture. Now you are going to see several presentations related to different aspects of the Egyptian vulture conservation in the Balkans, the Middle East and Africa. After these presentations, there will be a question and answer session, so feel free to add your questions or comments below. If you're interested in our work or if you want to know more about our project, the Egyptian Vulture New Life Project, you can like our Facebook page, The Return of the Neofron, follow us on Instagram, Live Neofron, or visit our website, liveneofron.eu. Enjoy the presentations. Welcome to the International Vulture Awareness Day. My name is Stefan Oppel. I work for the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds as a scientist to find out why globally threatened species are endangered and to develop solutions how we can protect them. Today I will talk to you about the Egyptian vulture and what threatens this species on its migration between Europe and Africa. Enjoy the presentation. Hello and welcome to a presentation about the key threats to Egyptian vultures along the Eastern Mediterranean flyway. I'm going to start by introducing that vultures in general are in trouble around the world. In South Asia we have a cattle drug called diclofenac that killed 99% of vultures in just over a decade. In Europe we had sanitary regulations over the last two decades that caused food shortages across the continent. And in Africa, many vulture populations are declining because they're being accidentally and deliberately poisoned. Now, all of these threats are a huge problem to each of the vulture populations on every single continent. But imagine you're a vulture species that crosses all of these continents. That is the Egyptian vulture. The Egyptian vulture is the smallest of the four European vultures and it routinely flies from Europe to Africa across various continents and therefore is exposed to all the threats that happen along the fly flyway. Egyptian vultures migrate on average about 5,000 kilometers on a single journey and this map shows you the tracks that we have obtained in the last 10 years from birds that we um, equipped with satellite transmitters. The yellow dots on this map show you where we have caught the birds and the blue lines show the migrations during the autumn season, so between July and December, and the red lines show the migrations during spring when the birds return from wintering grounds in Africa to breeding areas in Europe. And you can see that these birds cross pretty much all of Northern Africa, the Middle East and Eastern Europe. So they are exposed to a huge variety of different countries, regulations and threats that occur and that they have to cross every year twice during their migration in autumn and in spring. So the major threats that Egyptian vultures are exposed to vary a lot between their breeding areas their migration areas and the wintering areas. On the Balkan Peninsula, where the Egyptian vultures breed, we have a big problem with accidental poisoning that causes mortality that is mostly um, a result of people like livestock herders having conflicts with wild predators. They try to protect their sheep and their goats by poisoning wild predators, and the Egyptian vultures are unfortunate victims of this process because they're um, uniquely capable of finding dead carcasses and so they find the poison carcass much faster than, than other species, eat it and then die. We also have a problem with infrastructure, uh, poorly designed electricity pylons and a huge array of wind turbines, especially in Greece, that can cause mortality from electrocution or from collision and therefore lead to uh, territories being abandoned. As the Egyptian vultures migrate further, they have to cross Turkey. And in Turkey, they're again exposed to electrocution on poorly designed power lines. 
we found lots and lots of um, birds, not only vultures, but also storks and other raptors that were electrocuted on small distribution power lines along the flyway in Turkey. And we've lost several um, of our satellite tracked Egyptian vultures in Turkey because they were electrocuted on, on poorly insulated power lines. We also have a problem in Turkey that there is ongoing habitat loss because economic expansion converts many natural habitats. There is less food available for vultures. The livestock herds shrink in size. And so there's a, a general problem that habitat and food is less available in Turkey. As the birds go into the Middle East, they are exposed to problems of direct persecution. Especially in Lebanon, Syria and Egypt, uh, many migratory birds are shot on migration and that includes the Egyptian vulture. They're also uh, occasionally caught. That picture at the bottom in the middle shows a juvenile Egyptian vulture that was seen on a market in Lebanon. We also have a problem of an expanding electricity network um, that connects newly built uh, wind power generation facilities and large electricity networks which partly have uh, poor design like the pylon in the bottom right that is from Jordan or that have uh, the problem that we have in Saudi Arabia where people dispose livestock carcasses directly underneath uh, power lines so the livestock carcasses attract Egyptian vultures um, and other vultures to these areas where they are then at risk of collision or e electrocution with those power lines. In Saudi Arabia, we also have a big problem from poisoning, not necessarily because of um, only livestock herders trying to protect their livestock, but also because uh, the same drug that has killed all the vultures in South Asia, diclofenac, being widely available in veterinary pharmacies there and widely used to treat uh, livestock in Saudi Arabia, which are then openly disposed in the desert and available for vultures. As we go into Africa, we have yet another threat. Uh, again, it is direct persecution, but for a different reason. In Nigeria, there is a huge market demand for vulture products and that drives uh, the decline of vulture populations in Nigeria and Niger and other neighboring countries. We did surveys uh, on markets in Nigeria and found that of 300 sellers that we asked, all of them would sell Egyptian vulture parts. But the vultures in Nigeria are now so rare that is almost impossible to find Egyptian vultures. And when we asked the, the vulture traders on the market what the reason was why there are no vultures anymore in Nigeria, they all pretty much said that the trade is the, the root cause for the decline of vulture populations. And because there are now no longer vultures in Nigeria, the hunters that supply the markets travel to neighboring countries like Niger to shoot the vultures there and bring them to markets in Nigeria. And the country that has the largest population of wintering Egyptian vultures is Ethiopia. And in Ethiopia, we again have a problem with a very badly designed and a rapidly increasing electricity network that has very poorly designed small power distribution lines that pose a very high risk of electrocution to Egyptian vultures. We also have the problem that an invasive mesquite bush was introduced to stop desertification. And that bush um, grows quite dense stands that allow hyenas and other livestock predators to sneak up uh, to livestock. And so in the past, um, livestock herders in, in northeastern Ethiopia would simply shoot hyenas and other animals that would threaten their livestock, but because now they can't see those predators anymore in this dense uh, bush, they use poison to poison the predators, which again poses a huge risk to vultures and the Egyptian vulture in particular, uh, by finding these poisoned baits and carcasses 
and then um, succumbing to the poison themselves. And a third problem in Ethiopia is the poisoning of um, feral dogs, especially around uh, rubbish dumps and abattoirs where there is a huge amount of human waste that causes um, or is, a, is an attractive food source for um, feral dogs. And so these feral dogs uh, can spread rabies and so health authorities then go about to uh, try and remove those dogs by using poison baits and again this poses a risk to, to Egyptian vultures if those dogs are not disposed of very carefully so they're not accessible to vultures. So in we have different threats among different countries and continents and to address them we need different solutions along the flyway in every single country. Poisoning and electrocution are the key threats that occur pretty much everywhere along the flyway and they affect all large migratory raptors, the Egyptian vulture but also other species like the steppe eagle or many other vultures that are resident in Africa. There are some solutions that are readily available for some of the threats for example, the badly designed electricity infrastructure can be um, insulated with simple uh, tools and techniques and these solutions need to be urgently implemented across the flyway where this is a major problem. Thank you very much for your attention. Hi, I'm Ella from WWF Greece. Happy International Vulture Awareness Day from me and my four-legged colleague Kiko, the anti-poison dog. Enjoy my presentation! Hello everybody, my name is Serge Petagret and on behalf of my colleagues, I'm going to talk about anti-poison work in Greece carried out by two organizations, WWF Greece and Hellenic Ornithological Society, BirdLife Partner. Poison baits are considered to be the major threat and cause of death of vultures in Greece and in the Balkans. In the period 2012-2016, in Greece, six Egyptian vultures were found poisoned. As a result, this year we had only four pairs left in the whole country. In the frame of this project, different activities aiming at conservation, policy and awareness are implemented in three regions of Greece. We work in the last areas of the Egyptian vulture, and especially in Thrace in areas used by black and griffon vultures. The first action that I'm going to present you is the anti-poison dog units that were created in the frame of the first previous Egyptian vulture life project in two regions, Thrace and Central Greece. These two dogs and their handlers have been contributing to vulture conservation since 2014. Their goal is the prevention, detection and removal of poison baits and animals from the countryside. And as you can see, they do work. A total of 408 patrols were conducted, covering almost 1,000 kilometers. In total, 92 poison incidents were investigated, detecting more than 200 poisoned animals, including 16 vultures and more than 200 poison baits. One from the main drivers of poison bait use is damage and economic loss caused by wildlife to livestock breeders. Another action that we have been implementing aims to test, assess, and promote methods that minimize these losses. This pilot action is carried out for the first time on such a large scale in Greece. First tested method is called flood ray. It is a visual repellent used in livestock breeding to protect herds as the special flags hanging from the rope and flap in the wind frighten wolves and deter them from entering selected areas. The second tested method is called fox lights. Fox lights are special lights that are placed around the pens and like the flood ray, are visual repellents used in livestock breeding to protect herds. The third me method is livestock guarding dogs. We aim to create a network of livestock breeders with proper livestock guarding dogs originating from Greek breeds as it is one from the most effective method of livestock protection. In order to tackle the problem of poison bait use, a combination of different approaches such as law, law enforcement, better surveillance, change of mentality and elimination of drivers behind the use of poison baits, 
is considered the most effective. We create a network of stakeholders that play an active role in the fight against wildlife poisoning. The stakeholders can be classified into groups, land users and public authorities. The active involvement of public authorities is essential. However, in Greece, many times these bodies are either not completely aware of the poison bait issue or there is a lack of resources to deal with the problem. The network aims to cover these gaps by implementing technical and practical seminars and providing basic equipment needed for the management of poisoning events. Equipments as freezer and poison kits that contain necessary material to collect samples from the field were provided to forestry and vet services. We have already organized training seminars carried out by experts for forestry agents and police on how to handle a poisoning event. Another training seminars for veterinary agencies is planned in very near future. The second group of the network members is land users who are helped by providing services or equipment that um, can minimize damages caused by wildlife, what may have pushed them to use poison baits in the past. In both Egyptian Vultures Life projects, uh, we have succeeded to engage more than 300 members, and of course, we continue to reach new members. We provide them with electric fences to reduce damages caused by wolves, birds, foxes, and badgers. Microchips vaccination and basic veterinary service are provided to livestock guarding dogs that belong to the network members. We also advise them how to act in case their dogs are poisoned and provide first aid kits to save their dogs. Moreover, we share among our members binoculars, raincoats, t-shirts and hats. At the end, I would like to share with you our huge success. After many years of our efforts, the Minister of Environment and Energy has taken the first steps to address the problem of poisoning. Following a series of meetings with local authorities and stakeholders organized in collaboration with us, the Ministry has endorsed a ministerial decision defining concrete guidelines for, for drafting of local action plans that aims to reduce and combat the use of poison baits in the countryside by involving all relevant services and agencies. This decision covers not only the Egyptian vulture breeding areas, but the entire Greek territory. It is really a huge success. It was very quick. Thank you very much for your attention. Hello, and happy International Voucher Awareness Day. I'm Volen, and I work for the Bulgarian Society for Protection of Birds as a Flyway Conservation Officer. Today, I will present you the reinforcement program for the Egyptian voucher we started a few years ago to supplement the highly threatened population of the species on the Balkans. The Balkan population of the Egyptian voucher has declined remarkably from almost 600 pairs in the 1980s to less than 60 pairs in 2020. And if this decline continues, the population might go extinct in the next few decades, unless we take some urgent measures to save it. Common and widespread before, nowadays the Egyptian voucher has become a shadow from the past in many areas. It faces numerous threats, both in the breeding grounds and along the flyway, and it declines despite the high breeding success it experienced. Our studies revealed that even though most pairs raise fledglings successfully, an extremely high percentage of those juveniles die during their first year of life. Many young Egyptian vouchers take the wrong way to Africa and try to cross the vast Mediterranean Sea. You can imagine that these are over 300 kilometers of open water with no shore to land and rest, so only few can successfully meet that challenge. Furthermore, the survival of the adults and non-adults is also low due to the various threats that you already heard about. Despite the intensive conservation measures that we carried out on the Balkans over the past 20 years, the species population trend could not be reversed yet. So we started a pilot restocking program, which aims to supplement the population by releasing captive bred Egyptian vouchers. However, we know that in order to save the species, we must work on all fronts, combat the numerous threats along the flyway, increase the survival of the species, and supplement the population through restocking. 
We started a pilot restocking program in Bulgaria, which is the stronghold of the species on the Balkans. And the primary objective of this first phase of the program is to test three different methods in order to establish the most efficient one. We release captive bred birds that were kindly provided by various zoos and breeding centers within the species captive breeding program in Europe. And we test uh, three different methods. These are delayed release, hacking and fostering. So now I will introduce you each of these methods and the results that we have achieved so far. The delayed release method envisages releases of Egyptian vultures, which are one or two years old. The chicks are kept in captivity during their first year of life and then are released on the following spring, after about two months of adaptation at the release site. The first year is the most critical for the wild Egyptian vultures, when they experience the highest mortality, especially during migration. So we expected that when the birds are released in the spring, they will have enough time, approximately three, four months, before the fall migration to gain experience, to improve their physical fitness, to socialize with other Egyptian vultures and learn where the feeding and roosting sites are, which might help them to uh, increase their survival. So far, seven Egyptian vultures were released in 2018 and 2019, and 71 percent of those survived their first south migration. Four of them reached Africa and settled for wintering in the exact same areas where the wild individuals do. One of the released birds migrated to the island of Crete and spent one winter there. On the next spring, it returned back to the release site and after that migrated on the, on the right way, reaching Chad in Africa. Three more birds were released in 2020. Uh, one of the released individuals is already on migration and currently is on the peninsula of uh, Sinai in Egypt. So you can follow his track on our website. The second method we use is hacking, and this method foresees releases of uh, captive bred Egyptian vultures at the age of fledging. The hack is kind of a cage which is mounted on cliffs and is netted in order to prevent early fledging. When the chicks are at the right age, when they're ready to, to fledge, we just open the entrance and they can fledge naturally. So on the photo below, you can see the team bringing the two Egyptian voucher chicks to the hack, which is placed in a very um, rugged terrain with a, with a very hard access. And you can imagine that for the team, it's a real challenge to visit this place a few times per week to provide food for the chicks. Since 2016, we have released eight Egyptian vouchers through this method. Unfortunately, only two survived the first south migration. Three drowned in the sea, making an attempt to cross. One died from collision with electric cables soon after the release. One individual had to be recaptured because of imprinting. And on the photo here, you can see Anna, who had an incredible life story. She dropped exhausted in South Turkey, but thanks to the collaboration of many organizations and authorities and lots of people involved, uh, she was finally rescued in Turkey and returned back uh, to Bulgaria. Fostering is a technique by which captive bred birds are introduced in a wild foster nest. Once they have been accepted and raised by the foster parents, they actually can leave the nest as the wild birds. So they learn and they imprint the behavior of the wild parents. When chicks are about 50, 60 days old, we place them in the nest with a wild sibling of similar age. So far, we have released four chicks by fostering and all were accepted and raised by their uh, new parents. On the map here, you can see an interesting case of uh, Hedget and Oriana. Oriana is a captive born chick and Hedget was her wild sibling. So you can see that after fledging from the same nest, they finally met in, in Africa. The power of brother and sister's love brought them back together. They had different roots. Hedget embraced the risk and became famous by breaking the all-time record and crossing the Mediterranean Sea. These are about 600 kilometers for, for less than 10 hours. While Oriana chose the traditional route over the Middle East. And finally, after they survived this 4,000 kilometer journey, they reunited in Chad, where they spent the winter. Really an incredible story. We have tracked all the released individuals with GPS transmitters and could closely follow each step they make in the wild. On this map, you can see their tracks from the release site in Bulgaria to the vast areas between Niger and Ethiopia where they winter. 
We have done our best to prepare them for the life in the wild, but now it is all on their wings. So we can just keep fingers crossed night and day that they will grow old and return to breed back to the Balkans and will give new hope for the survival of this magnificent species. You can also be part of their journey and follow their movement on our website, lifenewfront.eu. Thanks for your attention and follow us to learn more about this magnificent species and the work we do here on the Balkans and along the whole flyway. In this presentation, I'm presenting uh, the Middle East component within the project Urgent Action to strengthen the Balkan population of the Egyptian culture and secure its flyway. The Egyptian vulture is a migratory species that can be found on passage through the region between the breeding ground in the Balkans and southern eastern Europe and all the way over our region toward the wintering ground in eastern Africa as well as in central Africa. However, on some occasion it has it is considered as well as a resident species. Through some small resident populations can be found in Anatolia or in the Syrian desert mountain over the Jolan Heights, the Red Mountain areas of Sinai, Eastern Africa and Southern Arabia. Hence, the countries in focus for the Middle East are mainly Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Egypt and Syria. The Egyptian culture has a record of fruited history in the region in the Middle East. It was mentioned in scriptures by the ancient Egyptians several thousand of years ago. It was considered among the many gods worshipped then along with the pharaohs. The species name features the word of Egypt both in Arabic and in English. And nowadays, it also features on the national flag of Egypt. Nevertheless, it suffers nowadays from several threats. And these threats can be found in all the countries of the project. And these threats, hence we are working to eradicate these threats. The work with this project with partners for the middle, bird life Middle East is focusing on defining all possible threats and that will affect the birds on migration through the area. That include electrocution and collision, poisoning from pesticide, using veterinary medical products that are harmful to raptors and vultures in particular as well as illegal killing of birds and trafficking and taking from the wild. All of that will be running along conducting awareness activities as needed in these countries of the region. From all these threats that have been mentioned in the Middle East, it is concluded that the illegal killing of birds is the main issue that is only relevant to the region as a serious threat. The studies have concluded that among all the Mediterranean countries, Egypt and Syria were among the highest three countries with annual legal killing of birds exceeding five million birds annually. Furthermore, more studies have revealed that Saudi Arabia was also and provisionally is amongst the top of all countries in the Arabian Peninsula regarding illegal killing of birds numbers. Illegal killing of birds will include both killing and taking of birds alive from the wild for various reasons as been pointed out in these studies. These include for food, for delicacy, for taxidermy purposes, and for sport and recreation, and even for a cage bird 
and also to control pests for some agricultural practices. However, the killing will include wide range of birds, wide range of species, whether big or small. They will include raptors and vulture as well, amongst all other species. And these will be targeted mainly for taxidermy and for the sake of killing only. Some hunters, or let's say, better to call them shooters, will shoot on anything that fly within the range of their rifles, regardless of the species, the timing, the observation, and the location, and the season. Hence, that's very cruel. But nevertheless, there were some cases of success in the project. That was following some actions from previous work by other countries, other uh, conservation, conserving migratory uh, birds in the region, aiming to eradicate illegal clinic of birds. There were cases of success in Lebanon by SPNL. SPNL was working through observation and monitoring with the authority relentlessly to catch some shooters who were in a breach of the hunting law. In Saudi, in Saudi Arabia, there were some awareness events about the threats that migratory birds in general and the raptors and vultures were facing. That was through raising the awareness about the important threat as long and along other threats being observed in the region from electrocution and from using VMBs. In Syria, SSCW has worked relentlessly as well to advocate for an update in the hunting law and hopes that this progress will lead to a positive result of these efforts to update the laws that are very old and this process will end very soon, hopefully. There were some cases of success in Jordan to confiscate birds that were taken from the wild for trafficking and for hunting. These were these birds that were confiscated include Egyptian vulture and a golden eagle that were released into the wild by RSCN to continue their life in the wild. The following video will show the success made by RSCN in this aspect, releasing the birds into the wild. طبعا النسور من المجموعات المهمة في البيئة وبتقدم خدمات مجانية بشكل كبير للبيئة منها التخلص من الحيوانات النافقة وبالتالي التخلص من الأمراض التي تسببت في نفوق هذه الحيوانات تم تركيب أو تثبيت جهاز متابع على النصر المصري طبعا النصر المصري من الأنواع المهددة بالانقراض على مستوى العالم ويأتي إلى مناطقنا في خلال الهجرة خاصة في منطقة طانا في محمية طانا وعشان كده الآن حيتم الإطلاق هنا في محمية طانا العقاب الذهبي اللي أيضا تم مصادرته وتم تقديم الرعاية لهم في محمية الشومري حتى تأكدنا بأنهم جاهزين للإطلاق video, we've seen the release of Fisal, 
Egyptian culture. Wissal was released in April 2019 with the supervision by RSCN after making sure it was uh, in good health to continue flying and roaming in the sky. Wissal released and flew and roamed over all in Jordan, went to Iraq and then to Syria back and then went south through Saudi Arabia to the eastern, uh, western coast of Saudi Arabia and crossed the Red Sea over the Babel Mandar into Ethiopia, where it's uh, aimed to winter there and stay there safely until its uh, uh, life cut short because it was reported that due to poisoning last February. Nevertheless, it is a success story because there is some kind of positive result from this work. Thank you very much indeed. Good morning, good uh, afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Samuel Pakari. Um, I work with Badref International Africa Secretariat uh, and Partnership and as, uh, as a voucher conservation officer. I'm in charge of coordinating the voucher conservation programs in Africa. Today I will give a brief overview for, of what we are doing and I would like to acknowledge uh, contributions and hard work from colleagues who spoke before me and others who have not. Uh, of course, uh, Solomon Mengistu from Ethiopia, Solomon De Deforu uh, and Joseph Onoja from Nigeria have done a lot of work uh, in their respective countries and most of what I'm, uh, I'm speaking about is really actually from their efforts. Over the last uh, four dec decades, uh, vultures, um, have, uh, vultures in Africa have recorded um, rapid population declines and actually uh, 7 out of 11 African uh, vultures are threatened, including the Egyptian vulture. And this uh, ambitious uh, project to conserve the Balkan population of the Egyptian vulture and secure its flyway uh, is benefiting not only the Egyptian vulture but also other vultures and migrating birds. We see uh, a lot of uh, you know decline of uh, vulture populations in in Africa, and um, if we, the, the, we we call for immediate actions uh, to you know to stem the the rapid decline. And this uh, this ambitious project uh, is uh, anchored on two on two main components. Uh, the first one is. Um, to achieve steady increase of the population uh, in the breeding ground uh, on the Balkans, which I will not talk much about. And the second one uh, is enhancing the context for conservation along the flyway and in the wintering grounds. And the, this, uh, this component uh, will be achieved through delivering uh, targeted outcomes, um, which are, uh, can be summarized into one a reduction of uh, loss of individuals do, due to er electrocution this is said to start soon and the second um, outcome is piloting actions to eliminate use of poison uh, this is uh, just uh, starting in in ethiopia and the third one is reduction of demand of voucher and voucher parts for traditional use uh, this is ongoing in in Nigeria and uh, the fourth one is enhancing education and awareness both in Nigeria and uh, In Ethiopia and Nigeria, uh, a series of uh, stakeholder meetings and awareness have been, uh, and awareness forums uh, have been held uh, to increase the education and awareness among the stakeholders. And um, through these uh, programs, uh, we have reached hundreds of uh, community members, enhancing their knowledge on vultures, uh, the threats uh, facing vultures, and the values uh, of vultures in the in the ecosystem. We, we appreciate uh, the value in investing in, in future leaders and in this regard, um, focused school education programs are in place and uh, targeted to school environmental clubs, both in Nigeria and Ethiopia. And we have reached to hundreds of, of, of students. We have started uh, in focused um, <coughs> uh, project areas where we have high concentrations of uh, Egyptian uh, vulture, especially in Ethiopia and in the key cities in, in Nigeria where the, 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 
the the use of vouchers for for traditional use is is prevalent. Um, of uh, you know, uh, creating uh, awareness uh, in marginalized areas calls for extra support, and to enhance the the education um, outreach, the project have helped uh, connect two primary schools uh, in Ethiopia uh, with water harvesting techniques, uh, provided uh, computers and internet connection and power, which is a total transformation to allow equal opportunity uh, for school for for marginalized schools. Uh, and students who would otherwise have missed out in the in the awareness and education we we also appreciate uh, working with the with the stakeholders and especially the government and the law enforcement uh, and in this case in Ethiopia we have uh, organized trainings for for rangers uh, from the Awash National Park and the Haridege National Park where more than 45 rangers have been trained and the the main focus is to enhance local capacity to combat illegal killing of vultures and stock poisoning and also enhance surveillance of incidences of mortality uh, of vultures. Of course, um, the big uh, gain in this is that, of course, the rangers are always uh, out there uh, in, the, in the field and they are more likely to encounter and record uh, uh, mortalities as compared to our our monitoring um, efforts so this really uh, uh, supports our, our our data accumulation and monitoring efforts. in 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 nigeria as you have already had uh, the main threat to vouchers is use of vouchers and voucher parts uh, for the traditional practices where heads uh, legs and in some extreme cases life uh, vouchers like the white backed and hooded which are here uh, on the pictures uh, are used in the, in this practice and the, the immediate thing is first of all to understand the extent of the street and we have um, identified um, a number of states as the hotspots uh, Kano, Oyo and Ogun and we have done uh, surveys in these cities to understand and in Kano uh, we have recorded forward drive markets which involves about 12 stores um, and has a, a, about 250 uh, wild drive shops. And in Ogun, uh, we have two, <coughs> we have recorded two wild drive markets involving that eight stores with with about 85 wild drive, uh, wild drive uh, shops. And in Oyo, um, we have two wild drive markets involving uh, 49 stores and about uh, 150 wild drive uh, shops. And in all in all these uh, three cities, uh, hooded um, vulture, the rapid fist vulture, and white back vulture are the most common uh, vulture uh, that are recorded in these in these uh, wild drive shops. Of course, there are so many other uh, laptops and, and other wild drive that are endangered, and, but are also in 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 this. And what are we doing to uh, stem this trade? Uh, um, our partners in Nigeria, the Nigeria Conservation Foundation, are working very closely with the National Association of Nigerian Traditional Medicine. First of all, to try and uh, uh, you know understand um, how the the, the 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 trade goes. How do they acquire uh, the 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 the, the parts, the wildlife parts, or, or or their their, their parts, or whatever they use for their practices. And um, this is very critical in helping reduce the demand uh, for vouchers and, and voucher parts. And uh, in this in this uh, in, in this model, uh, we are together with the together with the National Association of Nigerian Traditional Medicine, developing uh, we are developing alternative for the traditional use, and uh, uh, targeting specifically some you know plant based uh, alternatives, and of course looking at the common plants you know to avoid transferring the problem uh, to you know another uh, indeed or to other endangered um, organisms and uh, uh, we have made uh, you know huge uh, strides in terms of also influencing the the outlook and uh, you know new new upcoming uh, traditional healers was that the, tra the national association also trains new uh, practitioners and this, this uh, uh, alternative you know, will be embedded in the in the 
in the trade and in how uh, the knowledge is transferred and yeah so thanks so much for your, for your attention <laughs>